Thank you all for signing in and starting to join us on our webinar. Um, welcome to our webinar titled Leading with Results. I'm Martha Van Burkle. I'm joined by Carolina Anthony. Um, we're just going to give everyone about a minute to join in, get started, um, to orient yourself as you join in. You'll see that there's a chat. We have members of the Schema App team that will be doing the chat. I will also be keeping an eye on the chat, answering your questions, but also preparing those questions for when we transition the conversation from leading with results and, and Carly and I sharing our experience about ROI, empowering teams, building connections, all those awesome things to where we're going to answer your questions and engage with you. So um, see it in the chat. You'll see I'm just going to type in a big hello from Canada so you can see us there. Um, even start by telling us where are you joining us from. We'd love we'd love to hear sort of how we're touching the different parts of the world as we launch in. So we'll just give people a minute. Again, if you've joined us, welcome. Uh, feel free to say hello from where you're joining us in the chat. All right, we got Madison, Wisconsin. We got Dallas. We got Denmark, California, Orlando. Sweet, love it. This is so fun. North Carolina, excellent. Michigan, Richmond, Virginia. Oh, Hawaii, aloha. It's not Hawaiian weather today here in Canada, so I'll, I'll just wish I was there. Uh, Arizona, thanks. Welcome, Megan. So I am just super, super delighted today to get the chance to sit down and have this conversation uh, with our customer and friend, Carolina Anthony, um, and we will just go ahead and jump right in. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Martha Van Brickle, and I am the CEO and co-founder here at Schema App. Um, and, you know, I get the chance to lead a talented team every day and, and sort of review metrics and look at results and, and try to, you know, manage our own team to drive and lead with results. Um, but someone who's taught me along the way and who I really value as an expert in this space is Carolina Anthony, who's joining us today. She's the Executive Director of Digital Brands and Content Strategy at Advent Health. Welcome, Carolina. Thank you so much, Martha. I'm so happy to be here with you and everyone. Hello, everyone. All right. Oh, we got more people joining us from Florida. Florida is well represented, Carolina. So your, your people are here. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself and about your journey in digital marketing. Absolutely. So like Martha said, my name is Carolina and I've been in now the majority of my career. Actually, around 10 years ago today, it's funny enough, as to build the digital marketing team at Golf Channel and NBC Sports. And at the time, I was a marketing generalist. I was a, a media buyer, buying all kinds of media placements, a lot of which were in digital and had started growing a passion for it as enough. In that opportunity at building the digital marketing team at Golf Channel actually allowed me the opportunity to then build the digital marketing team at Miller's El House Restaurants. And for those of us in the US, um, we are, Miller's El House Restaurants is a national chain, I think currently of about 170 different restaurants around the country. I got to open about 20 of them during my time there and build the digital marketing discipline. And from there, I was asked to build the marketing team at Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts. Um, and that was a really exciting opportunity. I'm a huge buff, so that was a really fun job. And it was actually in that job that I started working with Avon Health. Avon Health was a partner of Dr. Phillips Center. So that introduced me to the Avon Health team. And now I'm fortunate enough to lead the digital omni-channel team. And what that means here at Atman Health is I get to lead content marketing, social media, reputation management, and website marketing. You know, all of the opportunities when I look back on my career, they've had one thing in common. And that's been just incredible brands with high quality products, passionate about and really being relentlessly passionate about serving the consumer well and consumer satisfaction. So it's been an incredible journey that brings me a lot of thrills and I'm so happy to be here talking about what I love with all of you. Amazing. So we're delighted to have you here. And I love how in your, you know, throughout your journey, like it's lots of different things, right? You're looking at that holistic view of things. It's not just SEO, it's just not content. It's like the whole piece. And like you talked about thrill, like, 
you know, and, and part of us, like every day we yearn for like getting up and just loving our work. So like, what are some of the things, you know, trends or other things going on that are, that are bringing you joy today? Yeah. You know what, Martha, I genuinely think that being a digital marketer is the best job in the entire world. I mean, think about the ever expanding industry that we're so lucky to work in. It changes all the time, right? It forces you to stay on top of trends. It forces you to uh, be an academic and be intellectually curious. Uh, you're really driven by real-time results and you're constantly learning and evolving, right? Plus you get to work with new technology, which is just like the coolest, I think. Um, there are many, many things that excite me about the digital industry in general, but I think most recently, it was really thrilling to see just the growth of digital adoption, particularly through the pandemic. So I think all of us that, not, whether you were in digital or not, you just saw the explosion of digital offerings and digital touch points from an array of business services that you use in day-to-day -day life because we need it. We needed a virtual option when we were all at our homes quarantining and trying to be safe. And that sort of explosion, you know, I recently read an article that said that in the first two months of the pandemic, we accelerated digital adoption five years, five years in two months. Like that is oh remarkable, <laughs> you know, like, think about that. Well, isn't that mind blowing? And so because is. we, yeah, because we accelerated digital adoption, we are really, I think as digital marketers, have more opportunities than ever to intersect or put our brand at the intersection of the consumer's lives and our offerings, right? Um, so, you know, for example, my, my current team at Avon Health, we had the incredible opportunity to, I say, bring hope back into the world um, by bringing the COVID-19 vaccines and rolling them out across community events across the country when they were coming out. And that was so incredible. Writing hope during a time that felt very dark and very heavy. So that's just one example of what throws me about marketing. I could go on and on, but it's, it's a great and incredible yeah. space. It, it's about like changing that experience too, right? Like I, two things that I've loved about this time is, well, one, seeing my parents like really like so different generations, like jump into digital to where they, I think they finally understand what I do, Carolina. <laughs> like where, I was like, you see that extra stuff in search, right? Like that's what we do at Schema App. And, and there's this, this like broader audience now that appreciates and, and is actually interacting also with all the things that we do, whether that be articles or podcasts or webinars or, or, or so forth. Now I, um, I, I love your also focus focus on bringing hope, right? Bringing joy, um, which is which is one of the things. Yeah, I've, I've learned digital marketing through my entrepreneurial journey. And I, I joke that I, I still love doing the nerdy, nitty gritty stuff because it's it's fun, right? Like it's it's fun it's to learn fun. Those, those new pieces. Um, speaking of sort of areas of our, our career, I, I'd love you to reflect on like areas that you're most proud of. And um, you and I have talked a lot about sort of um, being women in leadership, right? And and how, you know, we, we need to talk about that more. And I recently sort of tweeted around, you know, someone asked me like, why aren't there more female CEOs? And I'm a little, a little mad at myself that I didn't have the guts to respond because I I felt like I was going to answer wrong, like no one was going to like what I had to say, right? Or or I, I was going to get judged. So what are you most proud of? And and can you speak a little bit about, you know, also being um, an executive director, a leader um, that's also a woman? Yeah, you know, Martha, I've been really fortunate in my career to have a lot of, of things that I'm incredibly proud of and be part of really just remarkable projects and initiatives. You know, I, I launched the first ever Spanish language guide for Hilton Grand Vacations, the timeshare division of Hilton. That meant a lot to me as a woman of color and a Hispanic woman to be launching that, uh, you know, well ago. I worked on the team that brought back golf into the Olympics after 112 years of not being in the Olympics. And the incredible excitement around that in the form of and that affinity and passion, you know, it's just, it's something I'm really, really proud of. I mentioned 
And I got to open 20 restaurants with Miller's Ale House restaurants. And that was an incredible educational journey. The restaurant industry, brick and mortar, physical areas of business teach you a whole lot. And so that was really dynamic and something I'm proud of as well. As a Broadway buff, I got to bring Hamilton to Orlando. It's like the ultimate fandom experience. It was incredible and met all of my expectations and then some. Like I mentioned now in healthcare, I'm really, I'm working in a healthcare company in the middle of a pandemic, bringing probably the one sort of service that most people need most, which is great healthcare and meeting them where they are and appeasing their fears and taking care of their loved ones, which I am incredibly proud of. But I think out of all of these things, what I'm proudest of along the way is the incredible relationships that I've been able to forge with the teams that I've managed and the people I've worked with and incredible partners like you. And I know we, you and I talk a lot about relationships because they're so, so important. Um, as a millennial woman, a Hispanic woman, a woman of color in tech, I'm oftentimes the minority in the room. And I personally encourage that. I really want to encourage other women to pursue careers in tech and in digital marketing. I want to empower diverse voices to bring their incredible perspective and different experiences to our industry. And I want to be a resource for women in leadership um, because you know what, ladies, we can have it all. We can have the career, we can have the family, we can have the balance. I think for us, society oftentimes tells us as women that we have to sacrifice a part of ourselves in order to be successful. And that might have been true, you know, a few years ago, but it's, I don't think it's true anymore. I think you can be an incredible wife and mother and friend all the things that bring you joy and you don't have to sacrifice them in order to be successful. And when I hear you, Martha, say that you were afraid to share your opinion about why there's not more women CEOs, like part of me is not surprised by that because society has conditioned us as women to kind of mind our opinions or perhaps not be as outspoken as we want to be for an array of reasons. But it also makes me incredibly sad because one of the things I'm very passionate about is bringing your authentic self into everything that you do. So I, I want you to, to share your opinion with us because it is so extremely important in your opinion and perspective. I think you're one of the smartest people I know. So I want to hear your answer. What do you think? Why aren't there more women CEOs? So it's funny, you know, I was, I was thinking back to my career, right? And um, some of you may know, I spent 14 years at Cisco and I, I joined Cisco um, in California straight out of school. And, um, you know, I, I spoke out a lot and I got into some trouble, right? Early on, I call it, I was a, I was a healthy troublemaker, an entrepreneur there. Um, and I think for me, what built my confidence or I'll say continued to build up my confidence was when um, people took a risk on me or, or sort of trusted me or gave me an opportunity. And so there's two gentlemen, Jim Glick and, and Jim McDonald, who were sort of my champions. And I was like 23, 24, right? Like I was, I was a bit of a loose cannon with lots of potential. Um, and, you know, I think what was really exciting was that they just kept saying, let's see what else you can do, right? Like, let's create this opportunity. And, and so I got the chance under Jim Glick to, you know, basically scope out how we automate support for, for Cisco and build a team that we ended up building like 240 person team to develop this organization, which was like my first entrepreneurial leadership role, right? But if they hadn't taken that risk on me, um, I wouldn't have had that opportunity, right? I would have instead, instead of being entrepreneurial and people celebrating, you know, that those leadership and those skills I was bringing, um, they would have looked at it differently. So I, so I believe we need more people to take risks on people of all genders and all sexual backgrounds and like that diverse piece, because who knows what you will unleash <laughs> when those amazing people get to step into that leadership role or get to work together or get to work on something else. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, as an innovator, I'm a big believer that, you know, different perspectives bring it together. And it's not just different perspectives in, 
again, like what we think of a diversity, but diversity of experience as well. And so when I think about, you know, my team, like I have people in all different roles, all different experiences, but you know, like they're all contributing and bringing different perspective together. So also I think pieces of it is, is, you know, like just be open to getting that input. Um, and I will, you know, Carolyn and I, we're going to talk about results because that's one of the areas that I feel like you're just, you, you continue to school me on. Um, and, and so challenge accepted. I will keep speaking up and I will ask the community to embrace that, you know, I have an opinion and you might not like it all the time, but, um, but, and how to, and I challenge, you know, the people attending and those that listen to it, you know, take a risk on, you know, the women, on the people who are new grads, on the people of different backgrounds, um, because they just might surprise you. Um, and, and bring you not only just great joy, but also great results. Yeah, I think also diversity really makes your offerings match the consumers you serve. And there's nothing more powerful yeah. than that, right? So I, I love that Absolutely. perspective, Martha. I love what you said. I'm glad you got to voice yeah. your opinion. I'm, and I'm so I know, we you. created the space. <laughs> All right. So the other thing that you and I often talk about is is around growing and learning, right? And how this is such a like an important part of being a leader and being a digital marketer, right? We talked about like that thrill and 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 so it's interesting because you know I had to learn structured data from nothing, right? Like I had to learn it because my co-founder, who's my husband, like was super passionate about this area of search, and so you know here I am now the expert. Um, and, and so it's interesting because you know so one of the things I'm doing um, is is trying to sort of speak my voice more in social and sort of talk about the leadership challenges, not just as a woman, but as an entrepreneur, as a leader in SEO, as an expert, because by the way, I'm also like, I run a company on the side when I'm, when I'm not talking about structured data. Um, and then I'm also learning about um, more about finance, right? Like about corporate finance, because that's sort of like an important piece that I've had that I haven't experienced. Um, talk to me about where you're investing and learning and growing in the area of digital marketing and leadership. Yeah, you know, I consider myself an academic because I love to learn. Honestly, Martha, if I could get paid to be a professional student, what I would do. I love the books and the research and the writing and all the nerdy things bring me so much joy. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm really invested in two particular areas that I want to talk through, one professionally and one personally. So professionally, um, I'm currently really passionate about situational leadership. And I don't know if you've heard what situational leadership is, but ultimately what it is, it, it's a contingency based leadership model that focuses on four leadership uh, styles that you employ based on the situation at hand that you have with the people that you lead. So at any point in time, you could be directing or coaching or collaborating or monitoring, right? Um, and it depends on sort of your team members readiness and the projects and the other stakeholders and the environments and the challenges and all that stuff. And what it's really teaching me and what I'm passionate about, why I'm passionate about it right now, is that it's teaching me that the best leaders motivate based on what drives their team, not yourself. And that's so difficult, right? Because as humans, we, we think think like we do and we want to do the things that bring us um, the most joy or that motivates us more but you as a good leader really learns how to read the room and read the needs of your of your team and empowers them and coaches them along the way at the right time and I love that there's a lot of power in that and I think a lot a lot of opportunity for me to continue to grow professionally there and personally I'm learning tennis which y'all i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna be very honest it is thrilling but it is humbling like super humbling it's thrilling because you know what it's teaching me that i'm never too old to pick up new things and i'm building a new set of community uh, the tennis community in my city that i did not know existed and that's really cool but it is humbling because tennis is hard it's not just a physical game but it's a mental game and you really, uh, it teaches you to stay in it and persevere even, even when the odds are in, not in your favor. And so that's been extremely humbling and it's teaching me a lot, really enjoying it. My husband and I are taking lessons and it's one of the uh, sports that's really surprising me because it's, it's making me grow both on 
support, which is fun. Oh my goodness, I totally love that. Um, when you talk about situational leadership, because we talked about we were talking about leading, we're getting to the results soon. You know, people are asking like, "What are you going to talk about ROI, structured data, and stuff?" We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, but the one thing about situational leadership that I also love that call out, which means that all of us can also say what we need. And and I really encourage my team to to do this, where it's like, you know, if you're not getting what you need from your leader, let them know that you need something different, that Absolutely. something else is going to motivate you, because that's also like the power in us, right? The power in us is to articulate, like, this is what I need, or like, by the way, I'm like, love hearing your experiences, Martha, but right now I just need like some encouragement or hands-on coaching in this space, right? Um, so I think that's when when you said that, that's really what what came came to mind for me. Um, yeah, when you talk about tennis, I think about I'm a rower, and I, I recently I started rowing sooner this year than than reason than than normal. And the coach, who's this young, very capable woman, just like continues to tell me how much I suck at rowing, <laughs> and, and, you know, in a coaching way. And it's like, but like you, it's hard and humbling, and uh, I, I I love it because it's it's sort of also where I get uh, where I get to relax and um, and sort of you know be in a meditative state. Okay, we've talked about leadership. We promise we talked about results. So let's shift gears and and talk a little about a return on investment and results. You know I'm going to ask you about schema app and structured data because that's right. But let's start a little bit by first like what are the ways in digital marketing like and in your role as executive director like what are ways that you measure the results and the success of your team and then we'll drill deeper. Yeah. So, wow, that's a complex question, right? Because the beauty of digital marketing is our ability to measure results and it, almost everything that we do. And I think one of the most thrilling um, aspects of, of a leader in digital marketing is the storytelling piece and using ROI to connect, bring people along for the journey, educate them and rally them around your efforts. So as I mentioned earlier, my team is focused across the full digital ecosystem, right? I know uh, your team and my team specifically work in the web and SEO space, but you know we I have content marketing and social media and reputation management as well, and we are getting so many different uh, rich results uh, across all of these platforms. Right, one of the things that we're really focused on, rather than rely on one or two tools to sort of shape the success or tell us how things are performing. We're really going to step back and trying to connect the voice of the consumer across all of our spaces. So, for example, in web and SEO in particular, that might look like looking at Google Search Console and Google Analytics and GTM and Amplitude and SEM Rush and Hotjar and really start putting a holistic view of the consumer that really allows you to understand how they're utilizing the brand and what i found most interesting oftentimes they don't utilize it as you intend them to and so there's a lot of really i think cool opportunities there to uncover both from an, a web optimization standpoint and a content optimization standpoint when we're getting ready to build a new website or a new page or whatnot we're looking at all of this data holistically to understand what motivates the consumer. And then we are building the website with that in mind. Obviously, SEO and rich media is a big part of that. We build it with that in mind. We let it be out in the wild, if you will, to collect data and understand if it's performing as intended. And then most importantly, we're continuously measuring optimizing and repeating because as we all know in digital it's not like we do something set it and forget it we really like have a little baby that we nurture and grow you know throughout its lifetime so um i think one of the things that's important along the way when you're measuring results it's pausing and celebrating your successes and your learnings uh big or small doesn't matter, right? And I think that's one of the areas that as a digital marketer, I think all of us struggle with because we balance so many deadlines and our industry moves so fast. We move on to the next thing, right? Time to kind of rejoice on what we just accomplished. So I often ask people like, when was the last time you celebrated a small win with your team? You know, like when was the last time you did that? 
because I think showing your team that you're excited about the work, regardless of how big or small it is, and celebrating it with them along the way builds morale, rallies support, helps retention. Like it's a win-win across across the way. So those are just some of the ways that we're measuring. But I know that you and I spent a significant amount of time in the SEO world in particular, trying to uncover ways that we can continue to improve our ROI matrix. Well, and, and when you think we were talking about experiments, right? Like I, I feel like you have led the charge amongst our customer base on like, great, what if we try doing this with our physician pages and can we align like the content teams to, you know, FAQs was one that we tried, right? And we're just like, what if we tried different types of FAQs? What does it look like when we get it, when we don't get it? How do we compare that? And then use the data to make that business decision. And um, and that's something that I really love, Carolina, about the work that you're doing because you're doing that across the board, right? You're doing that in your, your user testing, right? As you're designing new websites, you're doing that with us, like in the structured data space, you're doing that in, in, you know, in the content ways, right? Like, and you're always looking for data to drive those decisions. Um, and so that's something that I think you've taught me a little bit, like how do we, when we do those tests, how do we test, measure, repeat, right? But the measure is so important, right? And, um, you know, to the point where, you know, some of how we're now reporting as we work with you and our other clients is to say, you know, like for the same URL, like let's look at how it's performing when it gets the rich result versus not, versus like comparing it with everything, right? So that we can really be particular about how how that piece is going. Um, so I put in the chat, I'll make sure our audience is still engaged here. What are ways that you celebrate with wins um, at schema app um, we do lots of things every morning we, we celebrate wins from the previous day with a positive focus uh, we also have something called peer recognition where within the team you can kind of you know nominate someone uh, who's living our values or done something great um, so we'd love to hear on on the chat if there's ways that you celebrate your wins because when you say like we just keep going that's like so white world right it's like Google just had their you know like the, the, the May algorithm change. Okay, like keep going, going, you know, but like, oh, wait a second, we achieved all kinds of things in May too, outside of, of that chaos and, and that change. Um, are there other ways that you've celebrated with your team, Carolina, that, that you'd like to share? And then we'll we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Ski Map. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm gonna steal that positive focus because that's awesome and what a great way to start the day. So one of the things that I recommend everybody on the call to do is be attuned with what your peer group uh, is doing celebrate wins and pick some up and try them in your team. What sticks, see what people love. One of the ways that we're currently set up celebrating in the digital marketing at Abbott Health is we do quarterly digital marketing awards. And the way that this works is that all of our team gets to um, anonymously on their team members that they want to nominate to win an award. And we've got really fun categories because our workplace looks so different than it did pre-pandemic, right? So one of our categories, for example, is the virtual warrior. So that's the person that's like rocking the remote hybrid work game and like showing up strong in all of our digital meetings, right? We have the connector and that's the team member that is incredible in connecting to other team members and key stakeholders and also connecting the dots. Or we have the creative brain, the person who brings sort of different perspectives and creative ways to tackle the work. So those are just some of the examples of the awards, but we get together in person once a quarter we uh, read out what each award winner, what team members said about each award winner, and that's you know really exciting. People love to hear. And then we celebrate uh, together and take some time to recognize them. They get virtual backgrounds that they can use in their meetings for the rest of the quarter. Of course, they get gifts and all that good stuff. And you know, it's not uncommon for our team members to share the news of them winning this award in their social channels, which is exactly what we want to see, right? We want to instill a sense of pride and a sense of culture uh, in the work and in the recognition. So that's one of the ways, but there's a lot of different ways that I think all of us can celebrate our victories. And and this is, these are results too, right? Like I think sometimes we focus on the hard numbers, right? And I like the hard numbers, like as a, as a leader, but what we're also talking about is like the outcomes of our team getting work done or feeling empowered. And if they're feeling that way, they're going to get more done, right? Like they're going to be more productive, more effective, better team members. So um, I, you know, 
the, the soft stuff matters <laughs> because 100%. that's actually what, what gets you, you know, like juiced up or amped up. My, my team knows that I like to like get all amped up, right? <laughs> like how do we stay amped up? Um, so talk about amping up results, right? And, and, you know, so in our engagements, one of the things that I really pride ourselves on is like, we want to see the numbers, right? We're yeah. not just going to be experts in structured data. Like we're great at nerding out and connecting things, making sure you're doing it right, making sure you're semantic, but like we're, we're business people too. And like, we know that you're running a business. So talk to us a little bit about how Schema App has helped you drive results um, and success in your team. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, you and your team, Martha, help us drive results in so many different ways. I think part of the reason why our working relationship is so successful is not an external sort of vendor, but we genuinely feel that you care about our brand just as much as we do. And because you care about Advent Health, you're constantly bringing to our team the latest and greatest in SEO. This might be happening. Let's try and test this out. Hey, there's an area, this is an area we might want to focus on or an area that we have opportunity in. So what that's done, what that relationship, integrated relationship has done is it makes us feel like we have a ton of peace of mind of our technical SEO efforts because we trust you all, we trust the process and we trust the systems we've put in place. Um, for all of our workflows, and we've got a whole ton, right? So we have a lot of different markups and a lot of different pages and a lot of different content types. All of our sort of processes and solutions are really turn turnkey now. Um, and I think that's important. And the reason why that is, is because we've created it together. So it's not only forming a great working relationship, but we're seeing that translate in results. You know, we were just uh, a few weeks ago, we got together to go over our latest uh, results of our engagement and our clicks from rich search results are up 25% in Q1. I mean, that's astronomical growth that a lot of, over, it just, it reflects the incredible amount of work that our teams do. Our impressions from rich search results are up 30%. And we've driven close to 15 million organic sessions just from rich search results, which is the highest we've ever seen it. And I think that's because our, our, our engagement is mature. We've been at this for a while. We've been partner for a while, but I don't think we would get these sorts of results if we didn't have the relationship and the processes that we have today. And if we didn't view Schema App like an extension of the admin health team. So thank you, Martha and the Schema App team for taking good care of us and for being such a joy and pleasure to work with. And it, it is working together, right? That that really matters. And and one of the things that the Advent Health team has done is they they take our recommendations or things on content, and then they, you think about it at scale. So like you know, Carolina, you are the executive director, but I know you talk website architecture. I know you <laughs> think about scale. I know you think about repeatability, right? And like those practices with collaboration, with trust, right? With metrics and results and alignment. Like we talk about, you know, what business goals do you have this year and how are we supporting this? How do we line up? Where is it that focus? And then we shift gears, right? Within our customer success team to say, oh, we're focused, you know, on university. We're focused on, you know, these different areas. Like those are the things that we want to do, right? Because we want to make sure that your team's doing it. And it's the journey together, right? Like it's all these other soft things that, that we talk about that, I know brings me joy sort of working together. Culture and value alignment drives results. Absolutely, 110%. Amazing, amazing. And the culture piece is like, you know, or, and the values piece is, is my why as an entrepreneur, right? Like I wanted to create Schema App to be of service to others, right? And, uh, and, and for our team. Um, we are going to start getting ready for questions. We have about, uh 12 minutes left which is perfect timing um while you think of your amazing questions i do have one already that we're gonna i'll, I'll give you carolina as soon as we get started i'm just gonna tell you like you just gave us amazing you know ski maps great work with us let me tell you what do we do for those of you that are on the phone that don't know what you do just let me take a moment and i'll, I'll tell you a little bit about 
what we do. So Schema App, we are an end-to-end -end schema markup solution. We're super nerds. We know this stuff inside and out. It's what we love to do. Um, and our whole idea is to get results with expert support, right? So we're not going to leave you hanging. We're going to partner with you, just like Carolina has described. And, and we really look at the whole end-to-end -end process. And this is this like do something, measure, iterate, kind of reapply again. And this is what we do with our customers, right? So we strategize we get the markup on your site, we deploy it there, we maintain it, we measure it, and then we talk about what do we need to do next, right? How does the content need to change? How does we get better organizational alignment on the goals that you need to do? And it's really this end-to-end -end process that our solution supports. Um, and while we are a technology company, right? So people talk about our technology, Schema App is a software as a service platform that helps you do all these things. Um, what people really also see us as a differentiator is our customer success. So you get someone who gets to know your business, who is working with your team, building those relationships, um, and and really we're gonna we're gonna support you from strategy through ROI and then over and over and over again with that return on investment mindset sort of as we go in. And so that's sort of how we talk about like our end to end solution. And we do have you know our primary platform pieces are our editor for single pages, but our highlighter is what does it at scale. It's what you know when we we think about architecting, thinking about going across many brands like Advent Health's very complex uh, family of brands and family of websites. You know, this is what sort of makes that all possible. Um, and, and we integrate with everything, right? So it's, it, we know your website's complicated and we're ready to tackle it and, and find different ways, whether you're on Drupal, on AEM, using a tag manager or Utilium, uh, we'll work through it uh, with you. Um, and our customer success team, like I said, is, is there to help you across the board, whether that be through strategy, measurement, or enablement. Um, so if you are interested, maybe this is your first exposure to us, or you, you're a fan and you just want to make sure you stay on top of all that fun news, um, the best way to find us is um, on LinkedIn. You can follow our, our company. And we're being really bullish, both Martha's opinions, as well as like uh, new things that were coming up, um, sharing them here so that you can see them in your feed as you go in. Um, and so we are very proud to be trusted by by SEOs worldwide and, and have the opportunity to work with amazing people like you, Carolina. So so thank you. Okay, we're going to switch gears. Martha's done her piece. Uh, we're going to switch gears and go into questions. So um, I love the first one. Eric sort of po posed this one early on. And he said, what would you tell a new marketing professional about getting into tech and software? What would be some advice that you have there? Wow. Um, I would say do it. First and foremost, do it. Don't question it. Just jump in. There's plenty of opportunity and growth in our industry. I think it's extremely important as you're analyzing uh, what area of digital marketing you want to go um, into, what, what brings you joy, what excites you, what makes you intellectually curious. Because digital marketing is so diverse, a lot of specialties and specialists in our industry. So I would, I would advise you to really ask that question. What do you want to learn more about? What excites you? What thrills you? And once you've done that, then look into your network, tap into your network and ask yourself, who do I know that has connections in that space? Who can introduce me to the right people? You know, when I first got started in digital marketing, I leveraged my network to connect me to other leaders that were already in the space. And the conversations that I've had with those connections and actually still have today have been so valuable because digital marketers, we, we're oftentimes excited to talk about what we do. And so we, we want people to know what's working, what's not working. We want to collaborate together. The other piece of advice I would give you is just kind of get into the habit of staying up with the latest tech and digital marketing trends and news. One of the things I do every single day is how I start my morning. I have my coffee and then I start reading sort of the top sites, uh, sourcing articles and noting what's what's happening in our industry, what's changing, what's coming up. And taking some notes about what I want to learn or need to learn more of. Then I dive into what well, is their trainings available? Are there webinars? Can I take some courses? Can I have a conversation with Martha or somebody similar that I know is, is working on this or thinking about this or has tried this? So I think that's important is just to remember that you're not at it alone 
and that your network is invaluable through it to a very, very long way. But do it. Get into it. There's a lot of opportunity and we we could use the talent for sure. now more than ever, I would say. Caroline, if someone just did a quick follow up on like, what are some of those industry resources? Can you name three ones that you like always go to to read or people you follow? Oh gosh, so many. It depends, depends what I'm looking at. So for example, for social media, I, I do, I read a lot of uh, socialmedia.org. Um, that's, that's one that's great because it has the latest and greatest or Nielsen Social. That's a really good one. Um, for things like, um, you know, SEO, gosh, there's so many. I spend a lot of time in the developer blogs, believe it or not. Like the developer blogs are really, really jam-packed with information. Um, so, you know, go to Google's uh, blog, go to others. They have a ton of free resources that get uh, you deep into it. And so you you can really understand what's the latest and greatest. Foster really also with your vendors that have thought leadership in mind. Martha constantly sends me article links and like, did you read this? Or, hey, um, I saw this, did you see this? Or there's an algorithm change coming. So those things are, are super helpful. And then the other thing I would advise you to do, I don't tweet a lot, but I do use Twitter to source a lot of thought leadership because on Twitter, all of these articles are being shared. So I have all these lists for the hashtags that are talking about all of the areas that I manage in digital marketing. And then I'm just looking at the conversation we're talking about. Oftentimes things like algorithm changes or break or the chatter picks up on Twitter before anything is published in the internet. And you, I know I love yeah, that. I it's love awesome. that. That's that's one of my favorite. I'm going to kind of merge the the two last questions because we only have about five minutes left. So one person's asking about like, tell us about your SEO team at Admin Health. Like, is it really, really big? Um, do you have dedicated SEO experts? And then someone else was asking about like the internal resources required to work with us. So maybe you can kind of. Yeah, I can combine those for sure. So I am SEO is, uh, I really call it a four-legged stool because there, we think about it, it across four different and have different sets of resources on these teams. So we have sort of a, an SEO strategy team that's focused in thinking through what should our SEO strategy be based on the landscape, our, our industry, our consumers, and those intersections. We have our content strategy team that's always writing SEO-centric content and does an incredible job being mindful of that and staying on top of the latest trends and, and mining for analytics in order to, to tell us where to go. We have the web marketing team that's really owning all the S technical SEO components to ensure that our site is crawlable, indexable, findable, all that good stuff. And then we've got sort of our vendors because we don't have huge SEO team in-house across all of these teams. We leverage vendors like Martha. We have an SEO agency. So it's almost like Captain Planet, right? When our powers combine, we like really own SEO. But I would say, yeah, I'm going to get us t-shirts, Martha, of Captain Planet. Oh my goodness, I love it. <laughs> but I think um, the key there is that SEO is not just the SEO, the traditional SEO teams responsibility. We all need to be thinking about SEO and SEO is impacting not just web and content strategy, but it can impact social strategy. It definitely impacts your reputation management uh, strategy. I mean, listings are huge for reputation, right? And I can go on and on about that. So there's a lot of opportunity and I would just advise you to ensure that you connect the dots across your organization as much as possible. So your knowledge is not just sitting in the SEO team, but across the board, because you can build many SEOs across your organization to really propel and Caroline, I think what's neat is like our customer success team works with like one primary connection, but then the intent is that they then connect the dots. And as we get deeper in the relationship, when we understand the different pieces, like I come and have done workshops with your team, right? Yeah. As we talk about like content team, this is why you need to be thinking about this so that every time you're asking, you know, this is why you have to follow this, the page architectures when you're 
building new content, whether it be service levels, or this is why we're going to bring in the customer success manager from Schema when we're strategizing that new content, right, which we've done sort of as you plan new sites. Um, but our intent is that, again, the, it's not a high, heavy lift on your team is making sure everyone's doing their roles and they have the insights and the perspective on what where structured data plays in to that bigger strategy. They don't have to be all experts, right? Which is what that burden that we really try to kind of overcome for you. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. We are out of time. Oh my goodness. So You're much wow. fun, Carolina. <laughs> Thank you so much for leaning into the conversation around leading in digital marketing, being women in technology, what results look like and how all those things come together. Um, and then also just sharing what your experience has been with us. Um, Kelly, if people want to connect with you, do follow up questions, where, where do they best connect with you? Yeah, um, so thank you, Martha. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all of you who've tuned in. Uh, I would love to hear from you if you have any questions or thoughts. I love geeking out about this stuff. You can find me primarily in two spaces. Uh, on Twitter, you can find uh, and my name is both like North and South Carolina, but pronounced the Spanish way. That's the easiest way to remember. On LinkedIn, uh, Carolina Anthony. So you can find me there. Uh, you can also follow me on LinkedIn. I, I Like Martha, I'm sharing my opinions about a lot of different things. And some of the articles and uh, trends that I'm watching. So feel free to follow me there and connect. I love to, to meet you. Amazing. We'll make sure those links are shared so that everyone can not just watch the recording again, but also can find you out there in our digital marketing space. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, to follow Schema App, go on LinkedIn, follow us there. You'll see all our latest news, um, including all of our information about today's webinar. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.